to Showtime with Maggie and Wendley. So today we are going to review an animated film called Epic that just came out recently. Epic. Yep. That's it's, the movie. Yeah. It was epic. Quite epic. It's epic. So in summary, the film is pretty much about uh, Mary Catherine, who's a teenage girl, comes to live with her father in the forest. MK. Yeah. She refer refers to herself as MK. And so she lives in the forest uh, with her father, who's a professor, who's trying to pretty much explore and find these little people called the Leafmen. Mm -hmm. And she goes through the whole movie as though she is pretty much in that relationship with her dad, um, in that strained relationship, but ends up finding out there's a lot more to the Leafmen and what her dad believes in because yeah. she becomes a little person. So it's going through the journey of, of her experience with the Leafman, and it's quite fun, especially because it's a good family film. It is. To take your kids and maybe even your friends. And so it's a really good um, PG type of film. Yeah, and, and the animation is really quite delightful, I would yeah. say. Uh, actually, when, when the movie starts, <clears throat> I, actually, I second guess it a little bit. I wasn't sure if it was actually a live footage or if, if it was really actually animate it it was that good um, but then actually when you go into the when they scoop into the forest part and the movie begins to you know have more you know mm -hmm. movement then that's when you see that it's it, it actually is an animation film yeah so yeah. I think the quality of the animation for just the scenery is is amazing just like yeah. what Maggie had said but one of the things is you can definitely tell when they have the facial features and you can tell that at that time it is something that was animated and computer generated yeah. but one of the main things to know is that this film is actually directed by Chris Wedge but it's also based on a book and the book's name is The Leafman and I don't say this wrong so it's The Leafman and the Brave Good Book so it's based on this book, but it's transformed into this movie so that now we can enjoy it on the big screens. Yeah, and for what I know, it's it's just slightly, slightly based on the book. It's not, you won't be seeing what you read on the book, on the film. It's just slightly based on it, and it has beautiful characters. Um, it's very magical. Let's talk about that. It's a very magical place because you go into it, and at first you see the little people the little humans, the leaf men, but then the forest becomes alive and then the flowers and um, the hummingbirds are being used as their their means of transportation, you know, mm -hmm. for the leaf men, for the army of, of leaf men. And it's it's really beautiful. Uh, the flowers, the trees, the, the, the queen. Yeah. The queen, she's amazing how she has the, the power to move the forest and... and it's it's really beautiful. Yeah. I loved I loved all the characters. I loved the way um, it all plays out and the imagination. It really takes you back into your childhood, the inner child mm -hmm. within you, to really just imagine. Wow, if something like this was actually real, how awesome would that be? Yeah, and yeah. you know, actually, Maggie, there is. Uh, we talked about it earlier that there are some cultures that do believe that there right. is kind of a leafman. Um, little world mm -hmm. so a lot of times there are cultures that believe that these little people are there and they would be very respectful uh, whenever they step into a park an area that's the forest so a lot of the really neat things that come alive in this film is that there is some people who do believe in it but then we also wanted to know like in this imaginary world what kinds of really neat things there are because that creativity to make those flowers into actually people or they humanize it and they right. make it personified into like the queen or maybe a little girl and things like that so those are always very yeah. cute things that that we saw in the film and one of the things that I love loved about this was the family uh, dynamics so it's looking at the the child which is Mary Catherine MK. MK so she's the daughter and then the father because they have that strained relationship not knowing each other before she moved in she was always staying with her mother and so in the very beginning you see that she's trying to cope with her mother's passing okay. and so that kind of connection that she had with her dad um, they actually ended up going um, through this journey together and really understanding each other and so she's really finding a home where her father lives in the forest so that was a kind of a neat thing for yeah me. I like that I like how you mentioned how she's finding a home in the forest where her father really actually 
lives in because he's always searching and wanting to find these little people that he believes in and how the whole world is just pretty much making fun of this one character of who he is this and his character is really funny the way that they created it because it's a very nerdy character yeah. you know he's and he's really it's uh it's really interesting and let's actually talk about him yep. um his uh character is professor bomba right mm -hmm. and he, it's played by jason sudikis yeah. and he the the actor jason he's actually one of the saturday night live characters and he's really funny he plays uh, his voice is perfect for the character and his this father he he's been his passion is finding these little people because it was of the reason why his family broke apart is because of the passion and the belief that he had about these creatures or this advanced civilization actually existing and so at the end of the movie is really pretty how he says you know how that's the reason why he continued to look for them because it was as if it was going to make everything okay for him at the end of the day yeah that was a really touching moment i think when he had described to his daughter why you know why he was doing this and perhaps just to prove you know to make maybe the mother stay at that time and so i think it, that was a really touching moment when they hugged yeah. and everything yeah. but i love the the fight between the good and evil that was uh, yes. one of the themes of course you know that's like in many in, movie themes in right? movie, good right? and evil which one will win and most of the time we know the who wins. wins yeah we know who wins just like in this film <laughs> yeah but it does take up place um with a lot of the different characters and there was one that was um kind of like the bad guy yeah and the villain of yeah. the movie and his name is what am i my favorite actor is uh, Christopher Waltz. He's um, the the villain also in the movie uh, Water for Elephants. Mm -hmm. He's an amazing actor, and his voice is just perfect for this character. And what this character does, he's trying to take over the forest and pretty much decay the whole forest. And that's really pretty much what we're doing as as the human society. And I think that's yeah. where. It plays into what us humans are doing to this, mm -hmm. you know, Mother Earth, to mo to Mother Nature, and I think that's where we really get to be conscious about the film as to what uh, the message is uh, is bringing forth to us, the the big people, the stompers, yeah, <laughs> of taking stompers. care of. Yes, we're the stompers, and and the what was it? The elbow. Yes. Wait, I gotta reenact this, okay? <laughs> So there's one of, one of the things that's pretty neat about this film is the editing part. And when they edit this, they'll show the, the people who are the stompers or human beings, the actual life-size human beings, with these little people who look at us as dumb, slow uh, human beings. And so there's one part where they do a slow-mo, <laughs> and that slow-mo is just a demonstration of how the Leafmen actually see human beings, where he got hurt, so the professor gets hurt, and, and then they reenact it and laugh about it, and they say, my elbow! <laughs> Pretty good, eh? Yeah? What do you think? I love it. Yeah. So yeah. I think that was kind of neat that they, they put in perspective the two sides, you know, like what humans see as these fluttering, fast moving little leaf men versus, you know, them seeing us as these big, dumb creatures. So I, I cool. was actually, even after the movie, I really started seeing things in a different perspective as, you know, just looking at a fly or like the fly. Uh, <laughs> Why we laugh because it's pretty funny. It's actually in in a lot in of the, the trailers, previews, right? In the yeah. trailers, yeah. yeah. There's a fly where. <laughs> Can you explain it? Okay, I'll because she's gonna it. laugh. Okay, so I'm gonna... so basically, I'll be all serious. All right. So the fly, <laughs> the fly was a little tiny guy, a youngster fly. <laughs> And the youngster fly, he was actually saying one complete whole sentence, but in that complete sentence, he actually turned into old fly and, and completely went kaput and died. Right. <laughs> so it's it's talking about the short span of, of the life of a fly. Of so a fly. it was just really cute, actually, the way that they played out. Yeah. Oh. It's you got to watch the trailer. It's in the trailer. So the fly, it's a it's a child fly, and then within seconds, it becomes like this really old fly with a cane. Yeah. With a cane. <laughs> well, actually, one of the le the legs breaks Fell off. off. He gets his leg and he like becomes this old fly. Yeah, so you can catch a couple of the comedian type of like things that part the little of this small parts that yeah, make, make you laugh. Yeah. 
and it's a very very good movie I think to kind of when you take kids to when they get that kind of humor it's it's something to laugh about but then of course it has the really awesome messages that you were talking about Maggie was saying environmentalism and yeah. it's a great timing for this kind of film yes because we have so many issues around our global society in, in kind of promoting health and wellness but also about you know what we are going to do about the earth yes. and how we're going to actually save it from a lot of the environmental pollution and all of those things As so take care of our yeah. our our home like they said you wouldn't you yeah. wouldn't trash your home would you exactly. then why are we doing it to this planet and one of the references that I that reminded me of of what is happening within the movie how these evil beings are trying to decay the whole forest and take over the world or at least take over the forest mm -hmm. is one of the the one of the, the phrases or, or lines that is used in The Matrix, the movie The Matrix, where the, um, the Smith character tells, mm -hmm. talks about what us human beings, what we do, what we are doing in this planet, and we are like a virus. And wherever we go, you know, we, all we do is take over, damage, and move forward, you know, and kill. And that's been what we've been doing, mm -hmm. you know, these past not only decades but yeah. centuries, centuries to this planet so now it's time for us to stop what we're doing and rebuild and take care and and nurture what's nurturing us so i think that bringing that awareness through this film is wonderful i think it's it's something that you should take your kids to watch it's definitely a family film kids are going to love it there's the snail and the slug that yeah. are played by um Let's see. Aziz Ansari mm -hmm. uh, plays the the mob, the slug, and uh, Chris O'Dowd plays Grub, the snail. And these two characters are really funny. The mm -hmm. the <laughs> the flower can't live without these two snails. So yeah. it, the, it's it's hilarious. The kids will absolutely dig these two characters. They'll just laugh their their way through the whole film. It. They, I don't think a child could survive this movie without these two characters. They're so funny. They, they, they get to. They're not the main characters, but they come in and and throw in their lines, and it's really funny. And their movements yeah. and their slugginess. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, the contrast. They have like the more funny characters, right? And then they have the more serious characters, like Ronan. He's more of a serious yeah. general type of guy. Colin and Farrell. So that's really neat that they kind of juxtapose the two. But I think that I wish that actually, um, is it, was it not? Not Nod. The, the character, the younger um, Leafman. And I, I wish that that character developed more. But I think there's a reason for that, for him to be kind of the younger, more inexperienced, more immature. As, and as he went on in the movie, he got more mature. Yeah. A little bit knowing bit. about what the world is all about. And then coming back. And then helping out the Leafman once again, even though he he left for a while. Yeah, he was being a rebel within the society of the Leafman, and I think it, it was perfect though how they they played it out because of the daughter MK being mm -hmm. a teenager. So being in that stage, you know, during your teenage years where you're trying to find yourself, you're trying to, you know, understand in your path why you're here, where you're going. There's just so many questionings and there's so much to deal with during mm -hmm. that important part of, of, of our of our life where we're trying to figure out a lot of things and sometimes we actually think we know more than, than mm -hmm. what we do. Yep. And I think that that's the beautiful part of how it gets played out with the father and daughter mm -hmm. where she, you know, she just lost her mom. She's a teenager. She goes into this home where... And she doesn't have that type of communication with the father. So being able to understand that and see the film in that perspective of the importance of a parent having that communication with their children, especially during the times of, you know, the, the teenage years, to support them and guide them in the direction where they can find out who they are, not having the parents... Mm -hmm you know, make them be who the parents <laughs> want them to be. <laughs> Telling and, people what to do. Yeah. yeah. And, and we forget that. We forget that at one point we were we were teenagers and we thought we knew it all. Yeah. And it, invincible. Or invincible. As most teens think that they are. Yeah. And we all do it at, at one point, yeah. I guess. Most of us at least. And it's it's 
really important to see the film for that as well to see the the beauty of how um, a father and daughter that have no true communication at the end of the film actually come together and work as a team. I think that was yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I totally loved that part of it. I think there's a lot of it that's parallel. And even though it was like a good and evil movie, we kind of see that growing relationship between the daughter and the father. And that was kind of neat. But I think one of the, the really fun things that I got from this was also the fact that there's like this adventure, right, that yeah. you're going on. And um, I really, really enjoyed the fact that they put it in certain perspectives. Because like you said earlier, you kind of see things differently after you watch this yeah. you notice all the smaller things and I think that we always look forward we always look outward but it's kind of looking within and then also looking at the smaller well, things in sorry. life and how that really contributes to what we love what we're all about and so it's it's really good to kind of do a launch right because as Maggie she has her own show by the way Maggie's World Maggie's and World. she goes and <laughs> talks to kids about these issues or even just to you know let kids know about this whole new world that we don't necessarily always see it's like the kids world and so in this aspect of the movie you kind of see the little people's world or the leafman world but i really really love one of the things that about this film that i like was it's kind of like if you want to do a comparison kind of like a bug's life and avatar like meshed together and some fusion sense, you know so there is that nature loving part of it and yes. saving the forest things like that but it's like Bug's Life, you know, where you kind of take a different perspective and you see all these like, creative ways. The that advanced they, society, yeah. you know, um, or with ants, the movie, is that what it was I think called? They, yeah, ants. I think they had like ants, a lot of like the, the advanced ones. societies, like these ants, you know, they've got everything under control and they, everyone has their role and everything mm -hmm. just works together and everyone's got each other's back. And, and that is an advanced society, something that we don't do. Yeah. in our society at this point in our lifetime but i'm sure that we're moving towards that direction at least that's where i hope that we're mm -hmm. moving so that we can all work in a way where we're supporting each other in everything that we can and make sure that everyone gets to live a life full of dignity and that's what you see in this forest that they have that kind of a life uh that advanced society where everyone is the structure of it everyone's supporting mm -hmm. each other and the queen let's talk about the queen oh, the voice yes. of beyonce I think this is where we differ in, in this one, so <laughs> I think Maggie can start on yeah. what she thinks about the Queen I or love, the Queen's voice. I love the Queen. I love the Queen. I love the character because it's a very strong character. They don't. They didn't create the Queen being like this docile, you know, um, very dependent of the of the army or of the soldiers. But she, within herself, she has, she's on it. And so there's this part within the movie where, you know, they are, the evildoers are trying to, to kill her. And she does, you, you never see fear. Mm -hmm. You never see fear in this character. She's a very strong character. And I love that they played, that the queen, there was a, it wasn't a king necessarily, but it was a queen. Why? That the queen holds the knowledge, the queen holds that divinity for the forest to continue to be alive and and and, and replenish itself and for a, a female character to have that grace that mm -hmm. this character had on in the film and the power that inner power that's not no pseudo no pseudo power but it's that inner power of the feminine that can move trees mm -hmm. and and leaves and 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 it was just very a very beautiful way of putting such a powerful character in a film that has to do with nature and it has to do with mother nature. Um, another thing that I loved about it is the little flowers, the little flower girl that looks up <laughs> to very this queen. Cute. She's very adorable. Cute. She's like, you're my, I'm your number one fan. Yeah. She's so cute. And at the end of the movie, it all makes sense for her. Yeah. But we won't tell you about the ending. About yeah, <laughs> but it's really cute. And so I, I love that Beyonce um played the voice of this character she's a very strong woman she she and her and even within hollywood uh she plays a, a very strong character she's not you don't see her as a weak being and uh i loved it that you know you can hear her through this character and i can totally see her mm -hmm. doing this character as you know in in a real film 
um, of a queen, and she's got the power for it. So I loved it. I really did love the character. It was it was really great. Yeah, I think yeah. Um, similarly, I, I would say the character in itself was was really neat and had all of the grace and style that we wanted to see in a queen or Mother Nature. But I think I was really caught off guard for some reason with her voice, just because I didn't know how to place it. It's kind of like when you have a lot of books and then it turns into a movie. And the ideas and the vision that you thought the the book was supposed to be in your mind, how you right. imagined it, was very different, you know. So I think I was a little caught off guard with the the voice, maybe because because you know it's Beyonce, right? I think because we like you know we know and I knew that Beyonce was a voice, so we already have this imagined um, role model of what she is, and so when you kind of try to place her into that role, it it just didn't work for me as well. But I think overall that.